Welcome to iLecture Online and now that I have all the tools to our disposal from the previous videos we're now ready to do a bunch of examples. So here's example number one. We'll start out with a simple one. Let's go ahead and integrate this and right away you look at that and go I don't have the differential to integrate that. I don't know how to do that. So I need to come up with some technique. Let's start trying with partial, uh, partial fractions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite this uh, content inside the integral sign 1 over x squared plus 2x minus 3. First, we're going to write it in the denominator and let's see what that looks like. Uh, hopefully it's factorable so we have an x and an x. Uh, we have a plus and a minus and when I multiply I get a negative 3. When I add I get a positive 2. It looks like a plus 3 minus 1 would do the trick. Let's see here minus 3. Yep that works so that's the factored form of the denominator. Now we can write it as a sum of partial fractions. So we can write this as a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 1. That's a terrible looking b. There we go. Okay, now the only thing we have to do is find out what a and b are equal to. To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the top and the bottom of each fraction, the numerator and denominator, by what we need to do, what we need to multiply with to make the denominator look like what we have over here. So in this case, we need to multiply the top and the bottom by an x minus 3. Oh, no, I should say x minus 1. There we go, x minus 1. And the second fraction, we need to multiply this one by an x plus 3. And here, x plus 3. Notice that in each case now, each fraction has a denominator that looks exactly like the one that I have over here, which means I can now put both of those fractions over the common denominator. So let's rewrite it now this way. So I have 1 over x plus 3 and x minus 1, and that is now equal to a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 3, and the whole thing divided over the common denominator of x plus 3 times x minus 1. All right, so now you can see, since these two fractions have the same denominator, that means the two numerators must be equal. One must be equal to this, and that should allow us to find out what, the, um, what a and b are equal to. So again, multiplying this out, I can say, therefore, if I just take the numerators now, I can say that 1 is equal to ax minus a plus bx plus 3b. And then if I... Um, group them together, I can then write that 1 is equal, equal to a plus b times x, a plus b times x for these two uh, components right here, for these two factors, and then I can write 3b plus uh, 3b minus a. All right, so now the next thing is I can realize that there's no x term on the left side, there's an x term on the right side, which means there's no um, corresponding term on the left side to compensate for this one here, so that means that this right here has to be equal to 0, because 0 times x will give me a 0x on the left side. That means that a plus b must equal 0. On the constant, however, I know I have a constant right here and I have a constant here, that means 1 must equal what this is equal to, so I can write that 3b minus a must equal 1. And so now I have two equations and two unknowns, which I'm able now to solve simultaneously, and that will allow me to find the values for a and b. When I plug those back in over here, I can then write this as a sum of two fractions. So let's go ahead and find out what a and b are equal to. Using the first equation, I can say that a must be equal to minus b. Simply, I'm going to move the b to the other side of the equal sign. And then I can plug that into my second equation, plug it in right here. So that means that 3b minus a, and a, of course, is equal to minus b. That is equal to 1. So then I can say, well, 3b minus times a minus b, that means 4b is equal to 1, which means b is equal to 1 over 4. So now I have my first constant. Now I can go ahead and find my second constant because a equals minus b. That means a is equal to minus 1 fourth right there. And now I have a and b decided. I can come back over here and write this. That means that my integral of dx divided by x squared plus 2x minus 3 can be written as the sum of the two integrals. They can be written as the integral of a over x plus 3, and a, of course, is minus a quarter, so that would be 1 is minus 1 quarter over x plus 3 dx plus the integral of my second 
uh, factor right there, which is b, which is a positive 1 quarter, divided by x minus 1 dx. And so what I've done now is I've turned my single integral right here into the sum of two integrals. And those are much easier to integrate. <clears throat> I can take the 1 quarter out, and I have 1 over x plus 3 dx, which is simply the natural log of that. So this is equal to minus 1 quarter times the natural log of x plus 3, and that would be plus 1 quarter times the natural log of x minus 1. And of course, plus a constant of integration. And so that's how we end up integrating this into this by using the partial fractions technique to do that. And that's how we do that.